It's also kind of the Super Bowl of police countermeasures. So we just went out and set the cannonball record. And when I tell people about this, I get asked two questions. The first being, how do you use the bathroom? The second, what kind of police countermeasures are you using? And let's focus on the second. So Forrest was on here um, talking about how to make your car invisible to police. And let's just be honest, that's really not possible, but there are a lot of things you can do to kind of go under the radar, both figuratively and literally. And really, it's, it's just about having a car that's not super flashy and something that stands out, I guess, is the, the first thing you need to do to uh, kind of be out of the sight of the police. But as far as like countermeasures go, uh, just a, a good radar detector, Passport Max 360, unit in R7, probably the, the best on the market, a good laser jammer system, AL Priority or the new TMG are pretty, pretty good at defeating almost every gun out there, including the Dragon Eye. A CB has proven to be kind of useless in these days of truckers that just listen to Pandora and Spotify and stuff and aren't really too concerned about uh, talking about where the police are. But uh, a good police scanner is still pretty useful to kind of know the whereabouts of, of the cops and kind of who they're looking for uh, at the time of your drive. So the car we chose for the cannonball record attempt was a 2015 E63 AMG. And the reason I chose this car in the color silver and the car in general was I knew I could disguise it and make it look very incognito. So what we did was took all of the carbon trim and covered it in silver vinyl. We took the red calipers, painted them gray, and took off all the badges and, and actually ended up covering parts of the tail light to sort of disguise it to make it look like a Honda Accord or a Volkswagen Passat or whatever uh, it looks like now. On this run, we ended up using something new, which was a thermal rifle scope and mounted on a gimbal on the roof. And it proved to be pretty useful, but uh, kind of temperamental and surely not something that you probably, the regular person would want to use on a, on a daily basis. Uh, it stands out and it kind of requires a lot of babysitting and uh, kind of tweaking to make it work. In my whole cannonball journey, you know, I saw Alex Roy's car, uh, Ed Bullion's car, and they had all these screens. And, and as we've talked about, uh, the more screens you have in your car, the more credible your cannonball car is. So I, I definitely wanted to make sure I had plenty of screens available. So when you're driving you know, fast, you, you want to have all the available uh, information as, as big as possible. So I ended up running an iPad, a full-size iPad with the app Waze. So the, the primary source of navigation for our run was Waze, but we're also running Google Maps on a phone and we had a couple Garmin's in for, for good measure. So to kind of document the run, we always use the Garmin GPSs because of the uh, all the information that it captures and it's in a like nice, easy to digest screen at the end. You can see all of your stats. But we also used a third party GPS tracker to kind of monitor everything and, and offer proof of the run. Also to document it, we are using some location sharing apps with some of our friends, Ed, Alex, to kind of document the run as well. The allure of Cannonball to me is not only the adventure and um, the, the challenge, but it's also kind of the Super Bowl of police countermeasures, which is also another hobby of mine. I think ultimately what we built was probably the, the best prepped Cannonball car that's ever been built. Unfortunately, the thermal camera uh, is not really plug and play. Uh, I'd like to I'd like to kind of dial that in and see if possibly I can make that a little more user friendly, but it's not it's not looking like it's going to be. I really I think the only improvement to the car would be some sort of radar jammer, but that is uh, not not available. And uh, even if it was, it's probably not a good idea to uh, to be using. Another tool in my arsenal uh, that I that I had was I switched the registration of the car a few days before the run 
just so I had legal like documentation of two license plates, just in case I got myself into some hot water at one of the fuel stops, I'd be able to switch plates and, and kind of hopefully uh, skate by. So in addition to, to everything, we are also running a plane crash avoidance system, which is something that you find in small airplanes to kind of identify when another airplane is nearby. And what we use it for is if the police are ever uh, using airplanes to record speed, we'll at least be aware of it and can slow down. So if you've ever been driving down the road and you see those kind of white lines, those are markings that the, the air, police airplanes use to kind of mark your speed. And, and I know you've probably heard of some crazy tickets being issued, and a lot of those come from being clocked from the air. I think the most favorite part of the car was probably the most mundane to most people. But after doing a bunch of cannonballs, what I found is just the livability in the car is so crucial. For every other run I've made, I've got bins of stuff kind of behind the driver's seat and it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fumbling around and where do you put the cooler and, and you, you obviously can't stop to get something out of the trunk so you want everything that you're gonna need inside the car. So for this run, we ended up actually cutting the back seat base out and building a custom like shelving unit in order to put the cooler, put a bunch of bins so we can stay really organized. And that was probably the best thing I could have ever done for this run. As far as eating goes on a cannonball, the, the answer to the first question everyone asks becomes a lot more interesting. On a cannonball, you're actually going through multiple time zones and it becomes very hard to kind of calculate your time. So to, to combat that, we use a very rudimentary oven timer. You, you end up having to use a, a very high-tech cannonball level oven timer that can go past 24 hours. One of, one of the most important things I think you can put on your car for a cannonball is a brake light kill switch. And when we're going, I always have the brake lights off, especially at night, because if you get clocked anywhere and the first thing that the, the police see is your, your big red brake lights on, I mean, it's obviously clear that you're speeding. So if you can kind of knock some speed off without them knowing it, I think you'll be in a lot better shape. Although Ed feels that uh, binoculars are, are useless, or at the, at the very least, just get them at Cabela's, a really good set of gyro stabilized binoculars are really a big help to kind of see who you're coming up on, who's coming at you in the other lane of traffic, and being able to slow down in time before they see you. There really wasn't much maintenance to be done. Uh, the, the car's got 75,000 miles, but uh, I've kept up on the maintenance really. Uh, just an oil change, uh, a look over. We put all season Michelin tires on it because you don't want to run summer tires because you do run into some cooler temperatures sometimes on a, on a cannonball considering the time of year you're doing it. And you surely don't want high performance tires that just are, are hard as hockey pucks. Obviously, I've, I've taken uh, police countermeasures to a level that most of you guys would, would never need or want but really a, a good radar detector and a laser jammer system with the heads properly mounted. I can't tell you how many times I've seen the heads uh, going this way, that way, up and down. You need, they need to be level and they need to be straight and they need to be mounted properly in the right position to give full coverage of the front of the car. So make sure that you get it uh, installed by a qualified installer who knows what they're doing. Another important thing is to have your phone or your tablet mounted uh, very clearly in a position where you can see it without having to look down uh, to see what's going on up ahead of you. So basically, this car is the product of five competitive cross-country drives, and we've come pretty far from the cheap car cannonballs where I'm buying Craigslist uh, laser jammers and, and radar detectors to kind of get across. But after you've done this uh, a few times, you really kind of hone in on, on what's necessary to uh, make a drive like this. This month's car stories are sponsored by The Ridge. The Ridge makes a line of wallets and bags that are designed to be minimalist and help us just take with us the things we actually need. So check out the link in the description below for a discount and buy one for yourself or they make great Christmas presents. And be sure to let them know how thankful you are for their support of VinWiki.